Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and you're listening to the Old Dogs REI Network with your host and top dog, Bill Manicero. You must be prepared to ignite. This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. Mino Studio is a pre- and post-production facility for all of your audio needs. Mino Studio's founder is an accredited audio engineer with top 40 and indie album credits. With over 30 years of music industry experience, Mino Studio can take your podcast from idea to reality. Contact Mino Studio at minostudio777 at gmail.com for more information. That's Mino Studio spelled M-E-N-O, minostudio777 at gmail.com. In a world where jobs are how most people make money. One man, one desire, one challenge dares to break the mold. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where we don't work for money. Money works for us. Coming soon, viewer discretion advised. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice, so you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manassero. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network. I'm your host, Bill Manassero, and this is a show where 50 plusers and anyone else who wants to join us get solid, no sales pitch real estate investing advice to help generate real cash flow. This podcast airs twice weekly on Mondays and Fridays, and if you aren't already a subscriber, go to iTunes, type in Old Dog, spelled D A W G. Find our podcast and subscribe. Well, we are really excited to have you with us today. We have a different kind of podcast for you. Um, and before I introduce our guest, let me explain. Rather than feature a real estate investor or someone related to real estate investing, today's interview is a little different. The reason I'm sharing this is because, well, as we look ahead to 2017, I'm sure many of you out there are looking at the new year as the time to either kick off your real estate investing efforts or to move it to another level. Now for those old dogs out there who do believe old dogs can learn new tricks, I'm hoping this podcast will inspire you no matter where you are in your personal season in life. And I hope it encourages you and know that you can still accomplish amazing things today that can radically shape your future. Starting out a little later in life may seem a rather ominous task to some of you, but be encouraged. You're not the first. Look at people like Harlan Sanders, the Colonel Sanders of Kentucky Fried Chicken fame. When he was 66, he began to launch his cooking and create his, his empire. Uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder began writing her popular Little House books at 65 years of age. Peter Roger invented the thesaurus at age 73. Uh, and a guy named Takachiro Mori was an economics professor until he left academia at age 55 to pursue a real estate investing career in 1959. When Mori died in 1993, he was Forbes' two-time reigning world's richest man with a net worth of around $13 million. And that's just to name a few. There's many more that have started out late in life and have launched anything from an entrepreneurial venture to uh, just something as simple as buying a few rental properties. You can do this. Well, about today's guest, he isn't 50 plus. In fact, he's 
you know, in his 30s. But his story is inspiring nonetheless for people of any age. John Lee Dumas is the founder and host of EO Fire, a top-ranked daily podcast featuring interviews with today's most inspiring and successful entrepreneurs. Born and raised in Maine, he graduated from Providence College on an Army ROTC scholarship in 2002. Upon graduation, he was commissioned as an officer in the U.S. Army. After a 13-month tour of duty in Iraq as an armor platoon leader, John completed his service to the U.S. Army and received an honorable discharge in 2010. Upon leaving the U.S. Army, he enrolled at Roger Williams University School of Law in Bristol, Rhode Island. Dropping out after one semester, Dumas took a career in corporate finance at John Hancock in Boston. Later, he went to New York City, where he worked for a technology startup until departing to San Diego in 2009. In San Diego, he began a career in real estate. Upon a friend's suggestion, he began listening to podcasts in order to pass the time during his long drives. He started listening to NPR while exploring other shows such as Pat Flynn's Smart Passive Income and Cliff Ravencraft's podcast Answer Man. After moving back to Maine in mid 2011 to pursue a career in commercial real estate, John thought of starting a different venture. He realized none of his favorite podcasts offered daily content. This gave him the idea of starting his own podcast. He developed the concept of a daily podcast that would feature the story of successful entrepreneurs. He named it EO Fire, short for Entrepreneur on Fire. EO Fire launched September 22, 2012. As his subscribers grew, he published Podcast Launch in the Amazon Bookstore. Podcast Launch is a guide of the exact steps he took to launch EO Fire. In 2013, John launched Podcasters Paradise, a community of podcasters, of which I happen to be a member. EO Fire has featured several entrepreneurs, including Seth Godin, Gary Vanderchuk, Barbara Cochran, Tim Ferriss, and Brian Tracy. The show was named Best of iTunes in 2013. EO Fire generates seven figures in revenue annually, and John continues to openly share his income breakdown in a monthly report on his site, which is verified by CPA. John and EO Fire have been featured in Forbes, Time, and Inc. magazine. Well, this is one impressive resume for a young man in his 30s. John Lee Dumas, welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network. Hey, John, how are you doing? Bill, I'm doing amazing today, and I'm excited to be here chatting with you. Well, uh, where are you right now? I am in Puerto Rico where the sun is shining and the birds are singing. Oh, wow. So the weather must be awesome there. Um, Hey, were you affected by uh, Hurricane Matthew? Uh, we missed it. We got some rain from it, but it actually missed the island itself. Well, uh, John, let's get into our questions. Uh, technically, you are not a millennial. <laughs> I think you're supposed to be bet- born between 1983 and 2004, depending on whose definition you accept. I guess you're more of a late-term Gen Xer. Well, it's actually funny you say that. So I was born in December of 1979. So for 15 days, I was a 70s child, and then it was 1980, and of course, I grew up in the 80s, but from uh, different people, you'll you'll see I'm either the um, oldest millennial or the youngest Gen Xer. Uh, so I'm right I'm right on that weird cusp. I guess you're more of a, a late term uh, Gen Xer than I would say. Yeah, I think that's the case. Well, you know, even late term Gen Xers get some sort of the bad rap uh, millennials get regarding being unmotivated, entitled, narcissistic, living in their parents' basement as they move into their 40s. I mean, yet I look at your story and you are very much the opposite. Very motivated, optimistic, driven, enthusiastic. I could go on and on. Forbes magazine says uh, you possess enough natural energy to perhaps light up all 50 states and a few surrounding countries as well. Hopefully Puerto Rico, too, which is a territory. <laughs> yeah, I hear you guys uh, lost your power over there. Yes, we had a recent blackout that was pretty crazy. What do you attribute that to? What really motivates you? Well, I will say this. I'm big on perspective because I spent you know, my early 20s as an officer in the U.S. Army, so I was the first 
round of commis- commissioned officers post 9-11. Back in 2002, I graduated, became a second lieutenant, and then I spent the next four years as an active duty officer. So I did a 13-month tour of duty in Iraq and really just saw um, a lot of scary things, a lot of very sad things. And that's never far from my mind. Like I realized, number one, how lucky we were and we are um, to live in the United States of America and in most first world countries, as well as a lot of second and third world countries that you know have great um, standards of living um, comparatively to a place like Iraq, where you just had a lot of strife and you had just 99.8% of the population were just amazing people that just wanted to live peacefully and and love their family and 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 you know live a happy life and unfortunately you know the 0.2% were just making that impossible um, at that time for any number of reasons so i saw that and i saw how blessed that i was uh, to live in where i lived for the first 22 years of my life before deploying to iraq and i've just <clears throat> never forgot that and so you know, when I have a bad day and the power goes out in Puerto Rico or something's not working well or this or that, I just kind of bring myself back to that moment. And I say, you know what, things could be a lot worse. So I'm just going to be grateful for what I have and, and really living in that attitude and lifestyle of gratitude is is so important. And that's something I try to keep close to me at all times. Were you a very self-disciplined person growing up? No, I wouldn't say so. I would say I was pretty average when it came to discipline. I would was not great, but I wasn't poor. I was kind of somewhere in the middle. And there are some things that I was able to be disciplined about, other things not so much. And the military really did show me that if I wanted to become a success at something, the discipline was going to be a factor of my success. So when I became an entrepreneur at the age of 32, I said, hey, I'm going to be you know, not the most skilled entrepreneur or, you know, the smartest or the best looking or fill in any of those blanks, but I will be one of the most disciplined. And I just started day one with that attitude of discipline. And, you know, now here we are four years later, over 1400 episodes of EO Fire later, over 40 million listens to date, you know, a seven figure a year uh, business, and that's net revenue, seven figures a year. Um, you know, I just attribute that to, to being disciplined. Well, John, you are an American success story. In just a couple of years, you've amassed a business empire that generated, for example, last month alone, 162,000 gross or 103,361 net profit just for that month. You have systematized your business such that you only have a few days a week where you do most of the work. With that kind of pocket change, what do you do on your days off? Yeah, I do have a lot of free time. And I will really share quickly why I feel like I have a lot of free time because I set up systems and automations that are really dialed in and it didn't come overnight. It took time to create those systems and automations, which I could then teach to a, a virtual assistant, which you know we now have a team of nine people here at EO Fire. So that helps out a lot for me with my free time. And plus batching. Like, for instance, Bill, I take two days a month, and in those two days, I record 30 episodes for EO Fire, 15 on one day, 15 on the other day. And that means for the other 28 days of the month, guess what? I'm done. Like, as far as recording for my show, EO Fire, I have 28 days to do other things. Now, I, again, was not able to do that day one. I would do one episode, and then I would collapse in a heap, you know, back day, back day one, even year one. Like, I had to build up stamina. I had to build up my chops. I had to get to where I am now, where I can do 15 interviews in one day. And it took me time to get there. And it allows me, again, to do this interview because, you know, you had to book this some time ago, obviously. But I set aside one day a month where I do 15 back-to-back interviews on other people's shows. So if you look at my schedule today, Bill, like you're my sixth of 15 interviews today. And, we you know, I'm on a back-to-back schedule. So every 25 minutes, I'm jumping on another show for the day today. And this is the one day a month that I record episodes on other shows. And, you know, I get over 100 inbound requests per month to be on other people's shows. So I have to basically, you know, number one, say, unfortunately, no, I'm not booking right now to a lot of people. Or when I am booking, saying yes, but these are the constraints that I have to fit our our, our interview in. And those that are, are willing and able to, like you were, um, then you become one of my 15 interviews for the day. And, you know, 
it's it's all me because I've committed this day to that, so I have nothing else on my schedule. You get a hundred percent JLD. Well, you're like Tim Ferriss on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Ferriss ain't got nothing on me, Bill. It's like the one hour work week. <laughs> So, John, is uh, your show a uh, a daily show? Um, how often does it air? Yeah, it's a daily podcast. Again, we're on episode 1450 at the time of this recording, and another episode goes live every day. Well, your business model, John, is not necessarily a passive income source. It looks like uh, you and Kate are an important part of the brand and therefore critical component to sustain the model. Are you looking ahead at possibly investing today's revenue to create a truly passive income source for your future, uh, such, such as apartment rental income or other uh, necessity-based income generators that do not require your active involvement, yet still produce substantial ongoing income? Yeah, you know, I've looked at a lot of things. I will say, fortunately for me, a lot of my background post-military and before I got into entrepreneurship and EO Fire was I was in corporate finance for a couple of years. I was in commercial and residential real estate for four years. So I do have experience in, in those fields where you can set up, you know, quote unquote, passive investments. Um, you know, if you, again, are willing to spend the time to have the team to run them, which, of course, is going to cut into your net profit, et cetera. But if you um, do look at those things, you know, and, and they, they can kind of continue to produce revenue for you going forward if you have the money to initially invest in them. It's something that I've definitely looked at. But I will say for me right now, I'm just like, this world is changing so quickly. There's things that exist today that make up a big part of my life that didn't even exist six months ago, 12 months ago, like your Snapchats, your Instagram stories, like this, like that. I don't look too far in the future at this point. I just know that I'm looking to continue to provide a lot of value, looking forward to generate a lot of revenue, looking forward to be very smart with my current investments and, you know, really build up kind of a, a nest egg that's going to allow me to continue to live both a location and lifestyle independence that I've really grown to love. The internet is always changing and evolving. I remember the big thrill when I got my first laptop. It was called a K-Pro, and my first email account on AOL. Wow, <laughs> how things have changed, uh, especially the Internet. I remember mail groups and actually uh, taught myself HTML for fun. Uh, recently, Internet regulation has changed hands from U.S. regulations to a global consortium of sorts. And I guess we really don't know you know, where this all will lead, hypothetically speaking, Let's say this new consortium decides that any commerce conducted should be for the common good and they implement a 75% taxation on all income derived from online commerce. Would you continue doing what you are doing or pursue other avenues? You know, I'd look at it. I'd look at if the number still made sense and if it was, you know, just frankly uh, too much work for too little return, then that would factor into my decision. But, you know, another factor of my decision would be what impact am I having on the world? What value am I adding? And do I feel like that, you know, it's still justified for me to continue to put this kind of time, energy, and effort into something where, you know, frankly, I'm keeping so little of the pie. And, you know, here I am right now talking to you from Puerto Rico for one of those reasons. I mean, Puerto Rico has an, an amazing economic stimulus package where if you move your business down here, you're able to have incredibly low and what I consider a very fair uh, tax rates for your corporate business that was just really appealing to me. And I said, hey, let's go check it out. So, you know, we can uh, continue to invest in our business and, and, and keep, you know, a bigger piece of the pie from the revenue that we generate. So, um, you know, that definitely is something that I keep my finger on the pulse on. And if things change when it came to that then, uh, yeah, I would uh, I would adjust with the change. So, I mean, you're already living in Puerto Rico, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. you don't have to pay any income tax down there. Is that correct? Uh, no, there is personal income tax, which is fairly, fairly legitimate. It's around 33%. So it's very decent uh, personal income tax. But um, under um, the, the Economic Stimulus Package Act 20, there's only a 4% um, corporate tax. And, and as a Puerto Rico citizen, you actually don't pay federal tax. Uh, that's just because. Um, do you know what the key demographics are for your current customer base, John? You know, my customer base is, is pretty broad because I came in pretty early into the podcasting game and I was able to do a little bit of a land grab and create a popular show that just continues to increase in size and reach 
And, you know, now we just actually had our first month with over 2 million listens for the month. But, you know, the average listener of EO Fire is as an entrepreneur, it's a small business owner, it's a side hustler, somebody who's looking to kind of just get their entrepreneurial dream off the ground to revenue because it's so hard to get to revenue. And that's where a lot of people are right now to get to revenue so they can potentially, you know, leave that full time job or, you know, support their family on doing something that they know, like, and, you know, uh, add value in this world with. Um, so, you know, a lot of my listeners are, you know, of the kind of the demographic of like 27 to kind of 45 years old, um, excuse a little male, uh, maybe like 55 to 60 percent, but definitely a big female audience as well. of just people that are looking to uh, really create, grow and, and monetize their own their own business, you know, their their um, their dream, so to speak, just like you, you know, Bill, uh, might not exactly fit that demographic um, with in, in all senses of the word, but you know you found EO Fire through any way, shape, and form, and wanted to launch a podcast, and you've now entered one of our communities, Podcasters Paradise, which guys people how to create, grow, and uh, monetize their podcast, which is just one of the number of things that we offer um, to a growing number of entrepreneurs. Well, our uh, target core listeners are people in their 50s approaching retirement or those that are already retired in their 60s, 70s plus. And they are either very concerned that they may not have enough income to sustain themselves in retirement or they are currently facing that reality, clipping coupons, trying to get by on inadequate income. They've worked hard all their lives and truly want to enjoy the retirement years, but they don't want to have to go back to work. I mean, they've been there. They've done that. They've served their time. Yet they long to have that retirement of their dreams. It just looks discouraging. Now, we're not talking Lear gents, a fl fleet of exotic cars and homes around the globe. Uh, they just want to know that they can cover the future health care expenses, maybe help their granddaughter have the wedding of her dreams or send their grandson to college, fly back east to visit their kids, uh, but stay in a nice hotel so as not to be a burden. They also would love to leave a legacy for their families. Given their situation and the limited time they have to achieve their goal, let's even say you're talking directly with your own parents or maybe grandparents. What advice would you give them to provide hope, encouragement, and practical advice as to what they can do to make that dream a reality? I would say this is, this is the, the time and the era of the niche, of the niche. And what I mean by that is, you don't have to be all things to everybody. In fact, if you try to be, you're probably going to fail because if you're this day and age trying to resonate with everybody, you will resonate with no one because there's just a lot of noise in this world. So like, what's that thing that makes you weird? What's that thing that makes you different? Like, what's that thing that people are like, oh, that's really interesting. Like, what's that thing that just fires you up that, you know, isn't really that normal? I mean, we all kind of, you know, have that thing. Maybe it's golf, maybe it's fishing, like whatever it might be. Like, what is that thing? And then say, hey, how can I just go deep in that niche? Like really just go one inch wide, one mile deep and produce meaningful content that everybody who comes across that content is going to be like, wow, did Bill create that content for me? Because I feel like he's talking exactly to me. Like I'm a fisherman in Northwestern Canada and this podcast or this blog or this video show is for fishermen in Northwestern Canada. Like how weird is that? Let me tell all of my friends let me, you know, watch every day. Let me become a become a raving fan. Let me, you know, just support the show in every way that I can because this is amazing. I love the fact that this exists. And that's the world that we live in where you can have 10, 100, 1,000, any factor lower or bigger than that number of fans and create a business that, you know, generates revenue that matters. Would you recommend uh, that they do some sort of an online business, launch something on the Internet that will produce for them? Yeah, I mean, I think that you're able to reach a really large audience by going online. I think that is an important thing to do. But remember, you can go online yet stay regional. I mean, you can just serve your town or your city or, you know, your region, whatever that might be. Just because you go online, don't think you have to change your messaging to serve the world because you shouldn't try to be serving everybody. You can still say, hey – Listen, this podcast is for people, you know, that are live that live in the Northwest and, you know, are looking for X, Y, and Z. And hey, if you're tuning in and that doesn't apply to you, maybe this show's not for you. Like, don't be afraid 
to turn people away and to, and to let people know what you stand for because you're not just looking for any ear. You're not just looking for any eyeball. You're looking for the right ear. You're looking for the right eyeball, and that's what matters. Well, John, you have just provided some great information here, and, and really, um, I can't thank you enough for coming on. Um, this has been very helpful, very informative, and there's probably people out there that want to find out wh where can they find out more about you? How, ca how can they reach you and in, in your organization? Well, listen, all the magic for me happens over at eofire.com. If you want to check out our website, we have incredible free resources for entrepreneurs. We have a free podcasting course. We have a free course on how to do webinars. So you can really start to kind of grow your entrepreneurial chops there. And I'm a big believer in setting and accomplishing goals. So big, in fact, that I launched the Freedom Journal, which just is this stunning hardcover gold embossed journal uh, that will guide you in setting a SMART goal, which is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-bound, and then will take you through the accomplishment of that goal in 100 days. So it's a very specific tool for a very specific purpose. Set and accomplish your number one goal in 100 days. So if you are just ready to actually crush that one big domino that you can knock over and start your chain reaction of awesome, visit thefreedomjournal.com. You can check out how you can order this amazing tool that's now served over 14,000 people to date on accomplishing their number one goal. You can become part of our private Facebook community, which is just full of support, guidance, help, and it's just an amazing place to be. Um, again, that's thefreedomjournal.com. Well, John, uh, gosh, it's been so great having you on the show and uh, really appreciate you for coming on and, and uh, just for the, the great information uh, that you provided to our listeners. But it's not over yet. You know, we have a tradition here that every guest that comes on this show uh, has to do their best old hound dog howl. <laughs> and that closes out our show. And I, and I know down in Puerto Rico, there must be some dogs roaming around. So <laughs> I, I know you know how they sound. So, uh, John, are, are you ready to do your best old hound dog howl? I'm ready for it, Bill. You ready? All right. Well, go for it. Ow, 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 ow! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was great, John. Oh, man, it's been a blast having you on. And just uh, thank you so much again for coming on behalf of all of us old dog listeners. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Bill, it was a blast. Thanks a lot, brother. Thank you, John, for joining us. I also want to thank all of our old dog listeners out there for joining us today. I know there's a lot of other things you could be doing right now, but the fact that you've taken the time to listen to us means a lot, and we really appreciate it. Well, that's the show for today. Remember, cash flow is king and real estate investing the means. Until next time, keep moving forward and may God bless. Thank you very much for visiting the Old Dogs REI Network. We would greatly appreciate if you would stop by iTunes and let us know what you think of the show. We would love if you could subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating, and write a review. The more ratings and reviews we receive, the more visible the podcast will be to others. Thank you.